Hello everybody, um, back out here for my three day muzzle loader hunt. I got this evening, Sunday and Monday. Um, deer seem to be moving a little bit more now that we've given them a few days to, without any gun pressure. Um, seeing more tracks in the snow down low. I came up high here today because as I'll show you here, um, I had that buck that I missed on um, November 24th, I believe. He, he walked right up to probably about 20 feet from, um, where I, I missed him. So, and it was 4 o'clock, so nice and early. So, I'm hoping he makes the same mistake again. He came actually from the pasture in, which is odd for that time of day, but, um, you know, that would actually give me a great shot because I'd see him coming, um, you know, well ahead of time. But if he does come from this woods out, I'm going to just, instead of what I did last time, panicking and shooting too early, I'm going to let him walk right out in front of me. I'm just not even going to move. So if you see, I don't know, if, if it happens like this, I'm predicting now, but if it happens like this, I'm going to let him walk a long way so I should get pretty good film of him. Um, and I'm gonna let, gonna let them get out in front of me before I shoot. So I only get one crack with the muzzle loader, so I want to make it count. But uh, yeah, it's muzzle loader season. Looks like we've got deer moving. Nice and calm, cool day. It's 32 right now. Snow all over the place. So hopefully, uh, hopefully tonight we make it happen. Be a great, be a real great Christmas present. Hey everybody, um, just got set up, didn't see shit this morning, um, took a long walk around the whole property, I really didn't see any good fresh sign anywhere, um, except, you know, up by this hang on stand that's basically straight up in this woods, um, you know, you, you, if you watch some of my hunting videos earlier this year bow hunting I got a stand right up there about 100 yards that I hunted quite a bit because you know it's just a good transition area um, from bed to feed for deer and um, they, they tend to run this little gully um, down behind me and there's a pond behind me too here um, this is what I call the pond set because the pond is basically right right back right there um, I haven't hunted this stand all, very much at all this season because for whatever reason the cows spent a heck of a lot more time up in here than they did last year so um, I don't like hunting bow hunting with cows around me and certainly don't like gun hunting with cows around me so I uh, really stayed out of here pretty well um, the Russian guy that drives his truck up in the woods is gone so I did notice, well, I didn't take a genius to notice this, but there were nine deer um, out in this field behind me last night, but they were right behind the barn, and the uh, farmer said, told me to to go sit right behind the barn tonight and <laughs> just shoot up in the field, but I don't know, I just kind of feel like that's cheating, so I th I'm gonna, what I'm going to try to do is really watch this brush line off to my right and you know there's a field here and i'm actually gonna really watch for them to come out right here along this field edge my, my effective range with my muzzle loader is about 200 yards and it means i can shoot basically over to where that knoll is uh, and this, uh, that one tree basically out in the middle of the field there i really don't want to shoot any any farther than that and that's right out there is where the deer were last night. Um, there were some feeding down low, some feeding up high. Um, clearly, I'm not going to shoot beyond that knoll because I'd be shooting right at the barn and 
It's that's obviously not safe. I'd only shoot if they were lower than the barn. Um, but yeah, we're we're gonna give it a shot. Hopefully, the plan is to to catch them before before they get down um, to where I can't get a shot at them. Typically, they come out of these pines up in here. That's probably where they're bedded right now. Is up in up in this woods up here. So it'll probably take a while. It was like 4:30 yesterday when I hit that field, but so we got about I'd say it's about 2:30 now. Um, so we'll see. Really been striking out so far on this muzzleloader hunt. Um, just not seeing a lot of fresh sign up in the woods where I was expecting to hunt. So I know there was nine deer out here last night, and we're gonna we're gonna hope they come out again tonight. Well, couldn't get any footage because they came from the opposite direction than I thought they would. They came from right straight behind me. I don't know whether I missed or I hit that deer. I um, put it right on his shoulder. I would say it's about a oh, 50 yard shot. I'd be shocked if I missed that deer. I, I, you know, I don't shoot a muzzleloader very often, but I did sight this thing in. I just didn't see, I didn't see much of a leg kick or nothing. Um, but then again, the smoke with the muzzleloader, so I might get down on the look. Um, it was a big doe. There was five of them. Crappy that I couldn't get any footage, but... Um, they, they came from behind me and I didn't want to spook them swinging the camera all the way around my body. Uh, they, they basically came from right back there. Um, geez, I know there was one little one in there and the rest of them looked pretty good size. So I'm going to get down and I'm going to take a look right away. Um. out here it's Monday December 21st <clears throat> it's in the morning it's eight o'clock in the morning I, I sat up here for you know about an hour um, just hoping something would filter through early um, so the story of last night I could unfortunately I couldn't get the camera on when them deer came to my left over here so I'll, I'll show you now where they came from and why I couldn't get the camera and turn the camera they were a lot closer than what I expected them to be and um, let's see I'm contorting my whole body right now to, to move this camera so um, basically straight down in there Again, I'm really contorting my body here, so bear with me. Straight down in there, there were five deer. So they came through, and um, <clears throat> I haven't ever gotten a deer with a muzzle loader, so that was kind of a mission of mine this year is to, to, to shoot one with the muzzle loader. And, you know, I. I decided, like, I tried turning my Tacticam on, um, but the battery's dead. I, I don't know if it's just from sitting out in the cold, because I knew it was charged the last time I used it. Um, I'm going to have to keep an eye on that moving forward. But, uh, so I got no footage of this. Um, I raised up, really steadied myself, and I picked the biggest one of the five out, real big doe. Um, and... You know, she was she was completely broadside, um, moving from left to right slightly, but it, she wasn't moving much. Um, and you know, I put the crosshairs on the shoulder and just squeezed it off like I normally would shooting a deer, and she leg kicked. 
and um, took off running directly away so I'm pointing uh, up up that hill right up there and I was just you know I, I saw her go down in that dip back there and then up and I you know I was kind of surprised she made it that far thinking I'd probably double longer I, I mean I thought it was a good shot <clears throat> so she runs she, she runs, runs over the hill and I decide, well, I'm going to get down and look for blood, see what I got. And, um, you know, at least track her over that, like, because like, I, I knew I could see pretty far over that hill. So I went up there and where, where I hit her and a lot of hair right on the point of impact. And it was gray, like grayish white hair not white like belly white um almost looked like brisket hair it surprised me and you know like with the muzzle loader from what i hear from guys they don't bleed right away and that's that was exactly what happened um you know i, I saw a couple drops of blood and then you know when she got down in that dip she really started bleeding i was like oh good now i got decent blood and you know as she went up the hill she started bleeding more and she's running full bore so you know any blood is good when when they're running but there was pretty good blood it was coming out both sides so i i decided at that point oh, this deer's got to be dead so i went up over the hill and this is a heck of a story so bear with me i went up over the hill and just as i got to the top of the hill you know i crested the hill i i looked to where she ran and I mean, she painted that re that hillside red with blood, and I'm thinking, Jesus, she's got to be dead. So I decided once I looked over the hill that I gotta, I'll just keep tracking her. I take four or five steps o over the hill, and I look up to my right, and there's four deer standing there. Go, like, oh, probably probably 80 yards away. And you know, I wasn't gonna shoot again at a different deer, obviously. I'm tracking this one. I mean, if it would have been a giant buck, yeah, because I got three tags for muzzleloader. I got both my buck tags, um, and I got the antlerless. Uh, so, yeah, if it was a big buck, I probably would have shot. But I, uh, I wanted to make sure the, the wounded animal was down before I shot at another deer. And um, so the, the, the one lead doe that grew blew out. She, she winded me, and... Um, they took off and I noticed that the blood trail the deer I hit was way below where, where these deer were running so I thought that's a good sign you know she went down towards the creek bottom which is what they normally do when they're hit um, so I, I kept on the trail took about 10 more steps and straight down below me in the gully um, you know roughly where that blood trail was headed but a little bit to the left um deer gets up i'm thinking jesus this has got to be the one that i that i hit last night or uh, a little while before gets up runs away from me turns and is completely broadside so i fire um, she's running, but again, a wounded deer, I really, like, if, once it gets up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot at it again and try to put it down. And I hit it. And I was, you know, it was uh, pretty clearly buckled a little and, um, kept running and went down in the creek bottom, came back up the other side, ran up the hill, got three quarters of the way up the hill, turned to the left quick, and laid down. I can see all the way up that hill. Um, I'll show you guys because we're gonna drive in there in a little bit. Um, you know, and I so I'm watching this deer from 250 yards away, and you know it's laid and laying down, and its head keeps coming up every once in a while. So I knew it was live. So I didn't know what to do at that point. I sat down for 15 minutes, and you know, I knew. I got to put this deer down somehow um, and it was getting dark like getting close to where it's gonna you know we're gonna lose light at least shooting light 
So I, I snuck as quietly as I could sneak down into the creek bottom and got down to the point where it probably took me 15 minutes, got down to the point where I was probably about 180, 190 yards from the deer. And um, I got in the scope and I, I looked. And just as I got this deer in the scope, it stands up. And I'm like, no, you got to be kidding me. It stands up took two steps farther to the left did one of these t and tipped over and died it's like oh great I, I got her so she you know I got I got to watch all that in the scope um, she died three quarters of the way up that hill so I start walking down towards the creek bottom but then you know my mind started playing tricks on me and and I was just like, well, I got to check that to make sure that this blood trail goes down in the creek bottom. So I got back on the blood trail, and sure enough, that was a different deer. I, I shot two deer last night, um, not, not knowing that, that that second deer that I shot at, I thought it was the wounded deer, you know. Um, so I got back on the blood trail thinking, well, the other one's dead. I know that for sure. Um, so I got back on the blood trail of the original deer, and I tracked it, and I tracked it, and I tracked it, and this deer is going straight down this, this whole ridge over here. She ran this whole hillside right, right there, um, ran that whole hillside and went, what I, what I, um, looked it up on the map, she went about 400 yards and um, hit the edge of the pines. And I mean, I'll sh you know, I'll put the picture, I'll flash the picture up so, so you guys can see. She's ble bleeding hard and there were a couple spots where she was just, I mean, blood all over the place. I know the snow makes it look worse than what it really is, but it, enough blood to where, I mean, I've tracked enough deer in my life. Or I, I just can't believe this deer's still alive. Um, she bedded twice. Um, you know, so I kicked her up out of two beds and I mean that that was really the big factor in me stopping I I decided at that point when I saw the second bed and and she went into the pines where I know they like to bed um, You know went in doubt back out and I was definitely in doubt because I tracked her 400 yards um, I decided I'll go take care of the deer that I know is dead and come back in the morning and finish the track job on on um, the first doe. I mean, it was a complete mistake shooting the second deer. I thought it was the, the, the deer that I'd wounded. So, I mean, I got my first deer with a muzzle loader. Um, hopefully, I'll, I'll, I'll find that I've got the second one. And, uh, you know, what I'm going to do is I got the Tacticam on my head. So, so you guys can follow the track job. I'm gonna I'm gonna drive the four wheeler right down in into the bottom, um, and get to right where I left the the blood trail, um, and you know uh, hopefully I can get right on that trail. It didn't snow overnight. Got perfect conditions for tracking. Um, Hopefully she didn't go very much farther in them pines, and I can I can find her. But here's the here's the kicker: um, four deer in my life that I've done this where I had to let them sit overnight. Um, I don't like to do it. I, I I hear you know all these TV shows are win and dope back out. I just said it myself. Um, three for three on backing out and coyotes getting a deer three for three that's why i don't like doing it um there's the coyote population in western new york is out of control so i'm gonna um i'm i'm hoping that they didn't get this deer um i'm never confident uh so we'll see what happens, but I thought I would preface this whole thing with I, I hate leaving deer overnight. Um, I know it's what you're supposed to do when you're not positive about your hit. Uh, I wish I would have had this on film, too, so I could have seen where I hit it. I, I'm 
dumbfounded. You know, I'm not a bad shot with a gun. Um, as as you've seen, I've shot shot a lot of deer this year. Um, you know, I I can't figure out. I mean, and I, and I shot the second one yesterday running. Um, and put a pretty good shot out. It was a liver shot. I was a little bit back, but it was a running deer. Um, I can't figure out where I hit this deer. It's got me my, my mind blown. The only thing that I can come up with, the brisket hairs got me weirded out. But the only the the the, the best. I mean, I think the scenario in my head that's that that makes the most sense is I hit it in the in no man's land, is maybe just high. Um, high in the shoulder uh would make sense why that deer would bleed that much and not die and it did look like muscle blood like bright red blood um i might have hit it right in no man's land and that deer might survive um it, that's that's in my head um i think that's what i would say happened but I don't know. Uh, it, it's really racking. I'm racking my brain trying to figure it out. So I guess right now I'm going to climb down and we're going to start start the track job and hopefully we'll find a deer at the end of it. Stay tuned. Well, here we go. We'll get the four wheeler. Down out of the tree. Like I said, I shot her over there. She ran that whole hillside. Um, go see what we can find. So last night that deer ran so I was uh, I came through that basically at the top of that hill right there so that deer ran across this whole hillside all the way that direction all the way to the pines and the other deer that I shot was came up down out of this um, this creek bottom um that's her track right there <laughs> you can see the blood right right there you can see the blood um so i hit her down here somewhere but you can see blood going this way and then all the way she, she ran this logging road for a while and then turned and went up that hill and she died up there so I had a heck of a time dragging her. I had to drag her up to that, that other logging road because I didn't want to drag her downhill and potentially kick this deer up again. Um, so I, that's how that happened. I, I hit her down in here. I mean, I didn't track her back this far, but you can see the good blood here. Yeah, right there. Right there, I think, is had to be where I shot. No, there's, I guess it's farther back. Well, regardless, she's dead. <laughs> this one's dead. Now we gotta find the other one. Yeah, she's bleeding pretty good through here, geez. Yeah, it ended up being a liver shot, so it was a little bit back, but I think I got liver and one lung. Trail. It took her a long time to 
stopped tracking her yesterday. Right here is where I stopped. You can see the blood. deer beds down and stands up again you can't find blood after a mile then i think it's time to to call it especially when it's running on somebody else's property so that's the end of my 2020 hunting season couldn't have ended on a worse note i guess but it's part of hunting i guess it's just just part of hunting that's that's unfortunate but I, I did get my first deer with a muzzle loader in a weird kind of way. I thought it was this deer. Pulled up, shot one. And I'll show you. I'll take a picture when I get back to the camper. Um, but that's that's how my 2020 hunting season's gonna end right there. Well, guys, um, fortunately. I didn't find that first doe that I hit last night. It's a, it's a shame, but you know, thinking about it, I can't come up with any other explanation than I hit that deer in no man's land. I just hit high. Um, you know, the way it was bleeding early on, and then you know, blood all the way up that hillside, and down in the bottom, and up the other hillside, and blood all the way till it got to that, till it bedded finally, and. Um, there's no blood coming out of that bed, so I really think I hit it in no man's land. Kind of licked its wounds, um, and while well, it was laying in the bed there, and healed up. So um, it's unfortunate. It's a crappy way to end the 2020 deer season, but uh, good thing is I did get my first deer with a muzzleloader, so that mission's accomplished. Um, uh, so I figured I'd just show you show you the deer. set up by the way I'll show you guys the farmer sets me up pretty good here it's my camper and, uh, basically hook right up to his electric here at the barn run cord right through to to here and got my electric pretty good pretty good little setup he lets me park my four wheeler in that um, pig shack but uh, here she is, first, first doe 
with the muzzle loader. First year with the muzzle loader. Pretty good size. Year and a half old. Definitely happy with that. Just wish I could have found that other one. I hit her a little bit too far back, but we found her. Well, that's it for 2020. After a very, very long season, starting October 1st for archery, today is December 18th, 2020, one of the last few days of muzzleloader, and I'm hunting my brother's property, which is a small five and a half acre parcel, but surrounded by some rather large parcels. This 12 point came walking past me, oh, about five minutes after sunup, legal shooting light I should say, sunup, and I put it quartering away right here and up through his probably heart and lung, this folks, is the biggest deer of my life. The biggest one aside from this was a five point that I harvested in 2017 during archery. I am very thankful for this deer and for his life. He will feed my family. And I'm also very thankful for my brother and all the hard work he has done because although this is a small parcel of land, it produced a wonderful buck. He has put in countless hours into our food plots, which aren't currently visible, into changing the property from brush and undergrowth, as you can see here, 